Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about sensitive skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that's your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe. And today I am in beautiful Idra, Greece. It is such a wonderful background and um, you can hear lots of cicadas and maybe we'll see a donkey go by. <laughs> but today I want to share with you my sunscreen wardrobe while I've been here in Greece. You know I overpacked totally um, and I've definitely been buying on the way but there have been some sunscreen products that have stood out and have really really helped me on this trip. So if you're so ready to find out what worked, what didn't work, and what I'm wearing here in Greece, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the sunscreen that I brought with me from home. I have nothing to show you for this first one because I totally emptied it and I ditched it like a week ago. <laughs> and it was the Copper Tone Sport Sunscreen. Now I did use this as my dedicated body sunscreen and I picked this out when I was at home because it has a really nice texture. It was not sticky or greasy on my body and um, it didn't have a white cast. It was also, um, sweat resistant or water resistant up to 80 minutes. So I thought that that would be great for hot, sweaty days, but also for swimming. Uh, this is an SPF 50 sunscreen. It is a chemical sunscreen since I bought it in the US. This is all uh, old generation filters with a little bit of fragrance, but no drying alcohol. Like I said, I liked the texture. I thought it was non-sticky. I thought it performed well before I used it, um, you know, coming to Greece. All that being said though, I really do feel like I picked up quite a bit of color with this sunscreen. I don't think it protected me too much from, um, from tanning. Now, I'm not sure if that's because it wasn't very sweat resistant or if the old generation filters just didn't perform for me. Either way, I used up the bottle pretty quickly because I have been applying, reapplying, reapplying, and reapplying <laughs> here in Greece. And um, I really don't feel like this was the very best sunscreen for really high UV and really sweaty or, you know, water situations. There's a big bug on my arm. So this one was eh, not my favorite. Now, of course, I needed a replacement. So I did go into a pharmacy and um, I actually picked up quite a few different ones. But the one that really stood out, the one that is almost empty now, this is the La Roche-Posay Wet Skin Gel. So this is a European exclusive, I'm pretty sure. This is a chemical sunscreen. It's seven different um, filters with new generation and old generation filters mixed together. Uh, this is a water resistant sunscreen, as you can kind of tell by the bottle. And this is um, definitely something that they are promoting for swimming or lots of sweating. And that's what I've been using this for as my body sunscreen. We've got alcohol, we've got fragrance. Like I said, it doesn't matter because I'm using this for my body. I do like the texture of this. It's kind of like a cream gel texture. It sinks in and dries fairly quickly. I do think that it leaves a little bit of shininess on the top of your skin, but I don't know. I think it looks kind of nice, especially on your legs. It looks all glossy, but I do feel like this has stopped the tanning. This has protected my skin really well, and I do feel like this is very um, sweat resistant because I have been sweating from, you know, my hair follicles down to my toenails. And this has been staying put really, really nicely. And I just have, I bought this like a week and a half ago and I only have that much left. I love this. Uh, if I come across it before I come back, I might just buy another whole bottle to have this at home because this has performed beautifully. Okay, so let's move on to face sunscreen. The one that I brought from home is the Avene Solaire Mineral Multi-Defense Sunscreen Fluid. You know, I'm, a, I'm in love with this. I gave this a rave review, like practically 10 out of 10, right? love this as my face sunscreen most of the time at home in Wisconsin where I'm not sweating all that much where the UV isn't usually all that high this doesn't perform in Greece I have to say it's not performing not when I'm out in the sun with no shade sweating for hours on end I really don't feel like this was protecting me all that much this is more of a casual exposure sunscreen now, as far as ingredients, um, this is using zinc oxide only. Um, and maybe that's part of the reason why it wasn't as high protection as I really needed it to be in this situation. So back at home, this is my favorite. Here in Greece, haven't been using it that much. So I went to the pharmacy and what did I get? But another Avene product, 
This is the fragrance free sun fluid from Avene. This is SPF 50. This is a chemical sunscreen and it uses um, all new generation chemical filters. As the name suggests, it's fragrance free. There is also no alcohol in here at all. So this is very sensitive skin friendly. This is kind of a liquidy cream type of texture. It is quite thick. Um, and I do feel like it leaves my skin quite shiny. I have it on today. I kind of powdered it down so it's not too bad underneath makeup but I do want to let you know it does have a little bit of that thicker type of texture for travel because I have been so paranoid about getting as much protection as possible on my skin I've actually been liking this texture I've like been liking the thicker more protective feel on my skin and I really feel like this has been performing for me this has been um, sweat resistant for me. It stayed put. It's easy to reapply. There's no white cast to this. And like I said, I put a little bit of concealer on today. It's been working pretty well underneath makeup. So this has been a real winner for me. Despite the slight greasiness that it gives, it's been protecting my skin really, really well. Okay, let's talk about the Beauty of Josan Rice Plus Probiotic Sunscreen because you know I love this. This has no place in my suitcase in Greece. <laughs> Another shocker, right? Uh, a Kelly favorite that I'm saying for now, for Greece, this didn't work. Um, I kind of am regretting that I even packed this. And really what it comes down to here with this is the sweat resistance, the water resistance, right? There is no water resistance to this. We already know that, right? This is, like I said earlier, a casual sun exposure sunscreen. This has no sweat resistance rating to it. This is not going to stay put with just the littlest bit of sweat on your on your face, right? So that's the biggest reason why I have not been reaching for this because it's not gonna stay put. Once you start sweating, you're gonna start getting that sun exposure. You're gonna be unprotected. So like I said, this doesn't really have a place in my suitcase. I haven't been using it. It's just taking up space. When I get back home, when I'm not sweating, when it's not so hot, you know, this is my favorite wintertime sunscreen. That's really where this um, has a place in my sunscreen wardrobe, but definitely not for vacation. So let me tell you about the MD Solar Science Mineral Moisture Defense Sunscreen, which you also know that I like and I've reviewed before in the past. Um, so this is, like I said, it's a mineral sunscreen. I really grabbed this because I like the size of it. It's not like a big tube like this one, the La Roche-Posay. It's a little bit more manageable for carrying around in your bag. So I really grabbed this thinking this was going to be for me reapplying like on my arms and my legs when I'm out and about and I don't have to carry a big tube. Honestly, sweat resistance. This is rated for sweat resistance. It says that it uh, resists up to 80 minutes. It does not. Not in my opinion, it doesn't. This does not feel like it really stays on the skin all that much. Um, as much as I like the moisture factor to this, as much as I like that it's not a, too much of a white cast, again, casual exposure sunscreen. This is not a vacation sunscreen. I've been using this mostly for my hands because it is difficult to um, keep sunscreen on your hands because you're always washing them, right, or using antibacterial. So for that, it's been okay. I don't think I need to be hauling this big old tube around for hand sunscreen. That's how I've been using it, but um, yeah, I don't think I would bring this on vacation with me again. This is something that I'll reach for when I'm back at home, when I'm in air conditioning, when I'm in shade, when I'm not sweating so much, or you know, maybe going swimming. Yes, I still brought more sunscreen from home. <laughs> This is the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sun Stick. Now, I brought this um, for the sole purpose of reapplication um, as well. This is so handy for throwing into your bag. It is a solid sunscreen stick. Um, this is a chemical sunscreen. It uses new and old generation filters. Totally solid, travel friendly. You can get this through TSA, no problem. And that was really kind of my thought process here because I did check a bag and you may know I've lost checked bags in the past and it's been a big deal. So I wanted to make sure that I had some type of sunscreen with me. If my bag was lost, I wasn't, you know, SOL, right? So I wanted to make sure I had some kind of travel friendly sunscreen with me. And this is great for like topping off your shoulders, your arms, your neck and chest when you want to reapply. I wouldn't necessarily rely on this as your full time sunscreen. Um, just because the water resistance here, the stick form, I do feel like is a little bit, it's got more longevity on the skin, but it's not rated for water resistance, for sweat resistance, for swimming, 
So I wouldn't rely on this if you're going to like a hot place or a humid place for vacation. But this is kind of nice for reapplication. Um, it's nice to have on hand. It's nice to have something travel friendly that you can bring on the plane with you. Um, so in that sense, it's been handy. Is it necessary? I don't think so because this has been doing all the work for me, right? But it has been nice to have something like this in my bag. All right, let me show you one more thing that's not a sunscreen that I have found to be very handy um, for reapplying on the go, and that is the Ruby Cell Puff. Um, so you know it looks kind of like this. This is what you get in like um, the little foundation compacts like CC cushions and things like that. Um, I just buy mine. You can get these off of Amazon like $5 for five. And these are really great for reapplying. You've seen me use this to reapply over a full face of makeup with sunscreen, right? I'll link that short for you somewhere up here. Um, but it's also been helpful when you're sweating. When your face is super wet, first of all, you just want to kind of like tap it down and dry it off a little bit with like a napkin or a tissue or something. Try to get the sweat off before you reapply your sunscreen. Then when your face is fairly dry, um, you can put your sunscreen all over your face. If you want to rub it in a little bit, um, do so. And then really kind of use this Ruby Cell Puff. Just tap it into your skin. Tap the sunscreen into your skin. And the reason why I'm suggesting doing that is because if you are a little bit damp, if you are a little bit sweaty, if you're rubbing the sunscreen, you're mixing it in with your sweat, you might be getting patchy application. When you do it with this and you tap, 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 you're not going to swipe it with this. You're going to tap, 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 just like you would with the foundation, right? When you tap your sunscreen into your skin, you're getting a little bit more uniform coverage um, and you're not going to get the streaks like you would when it's mixing with your sweat. So I've been finding that really helpful um, for applying my sunscreen um, and just kind of making sure that I'm getting really good coverage and really good protection. Other little tips I want to share with you if you're going to be in a hot climate, you know, worried about sun protection sunglasses and a hat are a must. You really can't skip out on that. Um, that's really giving you those added layers of protection. You know, Michelle uh, Lab Muffin always says the Swiss cheese kind of layers of protection. If you have a square of Swiss cheese with holes in the middle, those are holes or gaps in your protection. When you put another layer of like Swiss cheese over that, like two layers of Swiss cheese, there's still random holes in that second one but um, it's not going to, um, it's gonna cover some of the other holes and maybe put on another layer. Is this making sense? I hope that it is. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is don't just rely on sunscreen to protect your skin if you're gonna be um, in a really high UV situation. Make sure you're wearing that hat. Make sure you're wearing your sunglasses. And the last thing I wanna share with you um, in this little quick video about sunscreen, one thing that I have learned traveling to a very different climate than where I'm used to at home, really take into consideration your activities, really take into consideration the environment. Because, you know, the thing I always talk about with the sunscreen wardrobe is really picking and choosing the sunscreen that suits your lifestyle and suits what you're going to be doing for that day. And I'm really, really, really like relearning that lesson here because, like I said, some of these didn't perform for me, even though they're perfect at home. So really taking into consideration the change in environment, but also the change in activity. I don't usually spend this much time outside. I don't, I'm not usually this active outside. Um, I don't spend long hours at, you know, archaeological sites and stuff, right? So it's really important to keep that in mind. And the biggest lesson that I've learned in looking for a sunscreen for vacation is water resistance. Even if you're not going to be uh, swimming, you're probably going to be sweating and it makes sense to get a sunscreen that's going to stay put on your skin. So I really hope that you enjoyed this quick little video. I wanted to sit down and share with you the sunscreen wardrobe that I brought with me to Greece and also share some of the mistakes that I've made too with packing um, and hopefully give you some tips if you're going on vacation, traveling, um, or just looking for some sunscreen tips for hot hi uv places i hope this video helped you out and it was interesting i am curious to know what are your favorite sunscreens for like intense you know sun or lots of activity let me know in the comment box below if you love this video you watched it all the way through but you have not hit subscribe to my channel uh please consider hitting subscribe i'm not always in beautiful greece um but i do share lots of information about skincare uh throughout the week so definitely turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop I hope you are healthy, you're happy, you're safe, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. I love you so much. Bye.